Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to yet another exciting session of the Discovery Series. These workshops have been running since January by no other than Dr. Tanya Reynard. Tanya has been a very good friend of SciFest Africa for years and has decided to be part of our online festival. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, the online festival has been running for five months. Where have you been? We've celebrated different themes, and for this month, we are celebrating indigenous knowledge systems. So today, um, our workshop is discover uh, things that fly. Tanya is the Science Center coordinator at the Science Center, at the Science and Technology Education Center at the University of KwaZulu Natal, also known as STEC at UKZN. She was instrumental in establishing STEC in 2008 and has grown it from a science museum to a vibrant educational center for various levels. Apart from developing and delivering workshops, she has also a passion for science shows. Tanya's love for gadgets and experiments makes her frequent guest at events such as Royal Show, Zoo Fest, and SciFest Africa. Her Germanic sense of humor and her passion for geology won her awards at best, as best workshop presenter at SciFest Africa in 2013, 2017, and 2019. Tanya holds a diploma and a PhD in mineralogy from the Ruhr University of Bochum in Germany. Before I hand over to Tanya, I would like to set some house rules. To interact, please use the comment section if you are joining us from Facebook and you can unmute if you're on Zoom, but if you're shy, you are free to use the chat function. We kindly request that you, mute, you unmute yourself only when you are requested to or advised to. Over to you, Doctor. Thanks, Kubisa, and it's absolutely fabulous to be back on screen. And as you can see behind me, I'm not in my usual um, a home environment, house environment. I'm actually at work and I'm very happy to be back at work. Um, so I'm here in the, at the Science Center at the University of KwaZulu Natal so that you can just get a, get a glimpse. So here you can see in the back, you can see our live periodic table where we have real elements. So if you ever want to know how platinum looks like or gold in a piece of rock, just come in to the Science Center here once we are back and open. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, things that fly. And um, I, I don't like creepy crawly things, so I'll, I'll stick to the more technical side and I hope you're going to enjoy it. So what we need for this workshop, if you have some glue, very important, a ruler, a pencil or a pen, some tape, a pair of scissors, some, uh, whatever these ones are, a straw, and of course, you need lots and lots of paper. Please, you can use scrap paper, so that doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's just dive straight in. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about planes and helicopters and of course we're going to talk about rockets and let's see if there's still some time to launch a rocket here. So what are the forces on an aeroplane? So we have basically four forces on an airplane. So we have the thrust, so that basically allows the plane to move forward. We have the drag, so this is a kind of a resistance that, you know, air resistance that basically pulls the plane a little bit back. We have the weight that pulls the aeroplane down and very important because otherwise the aeroplane won't live, uh, uh, fly, we have the lift that basically keeps your or gets your aeroplane into the air. And I've got a, a very nice video from the, um, from the Airbus Foundation here. Oops, sorry. Back. I just have to hit the button right. 
It's pretty clear that planes are based on birds. The shape, the wings and the tail look very similar. But birds flap their wings to fly. Planes don't flap, but still fly. Why is that? It's all got to do with lift. Have you ever used a kite? When there's no wind, you first have to run a bit before it goes up. If the kite stays flat, nothing happens. And if you change the angle a bit, it goes up. This is because of the air that flows around your kite. See what happens when the kite lays flat? Now, let's change the angle. The top airflow bumps up a bit, and that gap sucks everything up. So your kite isn't pushed up by air, it's sucked up. This is called lift. An airplane does exactly the same with its wings. They're even in the same angle as your kite. See? And instead of running, it uses big engines. Engines have tons of tiny wings pushing air away, just like a fan does. They're spinning so fast, it creates enough speed to suck up the wings and make that big plane fly. What would your plane look like? Okay, so uh, unfortunately we won't be able to design like things like an Airbus or, or uh, a, a jumbo jet. Um, so what we're going to do is we are basically going to design a paper plane. And I've got, if you have your videos on and you see me, um, so this is how our paper plane is going to look like. So for that we need an A4 sheet of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain what we're going to do and then we're going to go and do it together. So the, in the first step, we fold a sheet of paper in half lengthwise and unfold it so that the uh, crease is the valley side up. So, so basically, uh, I'll, I will show you just now. And then we fold the top corners down to the center fold and then we fold the tip down and then we fold about one, two, one and a half, two centimeters of the tip up and unfold it back, uh, back down. And then we fold the top corners down to the center fold so that the corners meet above the fold and the tip. So, um, and you, 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 you've seen in this picture here that uh, we don't have like a, a sharp tip uh, or the, a sharp nose, but rather a blunt nose. And then we fold the tip up and this is called the Nakamura lock. And uh, so then we fold the entire plane in half and then we fold the wings down. And then we're going to do something that's called trim and fly. And I'm going to explain to you just now what it basically means. Okay, so let's just change the camera. Okay, so here you can see I'm all around in the science center. So this is the plane that we're going to go for. And I'm just going to, hopefully my you know, other plane is going to fly as well as this one here. I'm just going to switch to another camera. Okay, so this is our sheet of paper, our A4, and what we're going to do is we are going to fold it in half next one. There we go, right, so then we open it up, so you can see there's the belly fold, I'm going to open it up. Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to fold it like this, we are going to fold the corner here to the middle so that it's basically aligned with the middle fold, with the center fold, just like this. That's the one side and we turn it around and then we've got to do it on the other side as well. So here we go. So you can see, so we've got basically two flaps, just like this. Okay, so in the next step, what we're going to do is we are going to take this triangle here and we're going to fold it down. And we may, we'll just make sure that this tip here, the tip here basically aligns or matches this, uh, the, the crease in the middle. Here we go. Okay, so in the next step, you can see this this little tip here. So what we are going to do is we're going to fold our tip up and you don't have to be precise. So this is about like one and a half, two centimeters. So you're going to fold it up one and a half, two centimeters. Just again, make sure that it's on this 
a folded line so that it aligns in the folded line, just like this. Okay, but then we don't leave it there, we're just going to pull it back a bit. Okay, now we're going to take the, this corner here and we're going to basically align it to the middle. So here's our fold. So we're going to make sure that this tip here basically points to the middle line here. And what we do on the one side, we need to do on the other side as well. So we just make sure that the suns align these two corners and line the same. There we go. And then we're going to fold this one up so that keeps our flaps in place. Okay. And now in the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to just going to fold our aeroplane back into half. So you can see, this is now our aeroplane, and um, it was a little bit sloppy here, but anyway, I hope it's still going to fly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this corner here, this, this edge here, and we're going to fold it down and see what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically align it with my bottom line here, so just like this. There we go. This is one side, so you can see, and you can see that's the first wing. And what I do on the other one side, I need to do on the other side. So I'm gonna align this edge here with the bottom edge. Okay, right. So now our paper plane is ready to fly. So when we talk about trimming, you can try it out. So you can try and what's happening if you bend these little corners up a bit. Don't, don't bend them too high. So this usually should give you an uplift and see what's going to happen if you kind of bend them down. This should kind of point the nose downwards. So I'm going to try and leave them straight. Okay, and let's see if my plane is flying. Ooh, very nicely. Okay, so I hope that you got your plane ready and you were ready to uh, use your plane to do a lift off here. Okay, so now that we've done our paper plane, just try, a, a try out, bend the little corners a little bit upwards, see what's happening. Try and bend them downwards, see what's happening. And I would do this if I would have a paper plane here, otherwise I have to run all the way down here. Okay, so. Let's have a look at another kind of flying device. Have you ever been in a car and stuck your hand out of the window? When you tilt your hand a little bit, wow, you feel your hand lift up. Now tilt it the other way, you feel your hand go down. Well, a helicopter does exactly that, but instead of hands, it has blades. But see, those blades are tilted just like your hand. If the helicopter starts spinning its blades, it pushes the air down. And, you've guessed it, it goes up. Now comes the really cool part. While the blades are spinning, the helicopter pilot can change the tilt of the blades on one side. By pushing air away harder on one side than the other, you can steer in any direction. But we're not there yet. Most helicopters also have tail blades. Because the main rotor turns one direction, the cabin automatically wants to go the other. Phew, you'd get terribly dizzy, right? The tail rotor is there to prevent that. With tiny blades, it constantly keeps the helicopter balanced. To fly, you need to use three different controls. Yeah, flying a helicopter is not easy, but a lot of fun. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're not going to make a helicopter like this, but we're just going to make a very easy paper helicopter. Okay, so this is the outline of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a square, or sorry, a rectangle, 15 centimeters by six centimeters. Okay, and then we're going to measure seven centimeters from the top. Okay, down here. And this is basically the length of our rotor. And we're going to measure another two centimeters, and this is going to be your body. And the rest should be six centimeters, uh, which is going to be your legs A, B, and C. So in the next step, and this is very important, um, is the way how you cut things. So the top part is you basically measure uh, find the, the, the middle point, so you measure three centimeters from each side and draw a line. And then you cut along this line until the whole rotor length, so along uh, uh, the seven centimeters. Then in the next step, and this is where you have to be very careful, I've done this mistake myself, is that you're not cutting along the line, but you're cutting along the sides. So you measure two centimeters and uh, draw a line two centimeters. Okay, and then you just cut leg C two centimeters and leg A two centimeters. Then you're going to fold these two lines, uh, two uh, legs inside, and I'm going to show you just how to do this. You're going to bend the rotor one direction, and then you're going to bend the rotor into the other direction. And if you have a paper clip, and that's the name of this uh, red thingy thingy that I was showing to you, if you have a paper clip, you can to attach it if you want to. As I said, I'm going to show you just now how to do that. Okay, just whoops, can you share? Sorry, why is it not working? Okay, okay, computer problems. Here we go. it does it. Just somehow doesn't like it today. Every time it's something new. Ah, here we go. Okay, so I'll just gonna go back to my other camera view. So here we go. So this, there are the dimensions, and I hope that you can see this. So this side here is six centimeters. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is for this I have to put on my glasses. Okay, so I'm measuring six centimeters from this edge here okay so that's one two three four five six okay so i'm gonna make a mark here six centimeters and i'm gonna make a, a mark slightly down here also one two three four five six okay then I'm going to draw a straight line from my mark here at the top and my mark here at the bottom. Okay, and then I'm going to measure 15 centimeters. So 15 centimeters all the way down. So that's 15 centimeters. And again, I'm going to measure 15 centimeters. And I'm going to draw a straight line. So this is the size that we need. So it's six centimeters by 15 centimeters. So six centimeters by one five centimeters. Then we take our scissors and we're going to cut along the line. Okay, so this is our block, 15 centimeters, six centimeters. Okay, 
So in the next step, what we are going to do is we are going to draw a line at seven, seven centimeters. Okay, so that's the length of our rotor. So I've got to start from the edge, here we go, and then I measure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to make a mark at seven. And I'm going to make a mark one, two, three, four, five, six, seven centimeters on the other side. And I'm going to draw a line. There we go. All right. So this is, I hope that you can see it. So this is seven centimeters. This is for our rotor. Okay, so then we're going to measure, we're going to make another line, a line that is parallel. So parallel means basically it runs in the same direction with the same distance between it. So which is going to be two centimeters. So again, one, two centimeters from the line that you've just drawn, two centimeters, one side, and two centimeters on the other side. And we're going to draw. So this is your rotor side. So the seven centimeter side is your rotor side. The six centimeter side is your leg side. So we're going to start drawing a line for the rotor. Okay, so the rotor, they have the same width. So we have two rotors, we have six centimeters. So each rotor needs to be three centimeters wide. So that's why we're going to measure from the, uh, from the edge here, three centimeters. One, two, three centimeters. I'm going to make it long. And here from the bottom as well, from the edge, one, two, three centimeters. Okay. And then we're going to draw a line. So this line here, and you can just make it a little bit thicker. So this is the line that we need to cut. Okay. So this line here, you can see this. Okay. So this line here, we need to cut. Not this line here, not this line here, just this line here. Okay. Right. So in the next step, what we're going to measure is two centimeters, four centimeters, six centimeters. So two centimeters. So we have because we have three legs. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the uh, from the edge here, okay? And we're going to measure one two centimeters. We're going to make a mark, and then we're going to measure another two centimeters. So basically two plus two is four. So that's going to be three four centimeters, and then the rest is just the same. And we do the same from the bottom here, okay? So measure two centimeters from the edge, one, two, okay. So what we then gonna, uh, we're just gonna make some thicker lines from here to here, because this is the part that we're gonna cut and from here to here. So that's the part that we're gonna so you can make dashed lines or you can make a thin line just to help you. So we're going to just draw thin lines here because this is the line, uh, this is uh, where we're going to fold our legs. So then we, here we don't cut, here we only fold. So this is how it's going to look. So we are going to cut here. We are going to cut here from here to here. We are going to cut from here to here. Don't cut, no cutting. Okay. Right, so. Uh, so we're going to do this. So we're going to cut this line here, the long line for the rotors. Just like this. Okay. So you can see, uncut. And we're going to cut this line here, but don't cut it through, just cut it for two centimeters. 
so you can see I didn't cut it through, so it's only two centimeters. We're going to turn it around and we're going to cut it two centimeters. Okay, so that's okay, so now what we're going to do is we need to fold. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this part here and we're going to fold it backwards. Like this. And we're going to take this part here and you can decide if you want to fold it backwards or if you want to fold it, I'm going to fold it forward. Okay. So this is your bag. Okay. And now with a rotor, so what you're going to do is you're going to fold one blade rotor blade backwards along this line here, like this. And you turn it around and then you're going to fold the other line backwards like this so you get like something that looks like this there you go and in the final step if you have a paper clip you can just attach it to the bottom there we go okay Right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to lift it up high, high into the air. If you don't, have, if you're not uh, tall enough, uh, you can ask an adult to basically push it up into the air. Or if you have, I wouldn't say, uh, a very, uh, if you have a step ladder, just be careful when you have a ladder. So I'm, I'm tall, sort of. So I'm going to hold it up high enough. And then you just let it drop. And what you can see now, I hope that you saw it, that it was spinning. So I'll just do it again. Here we go. And just observe in which direction your rotor blade is, uh, your, your rotor is spinning. Okay. And now, once you've done this, I want you to do something else. I want you to just reverse. So you're going to, this one here that was pointing this way, you're going to fold it now forward. And the one was that was was forward. We're gonna fold it backward, okay? And we're gonna drop it again, and then just observe in which direction this one is spinning. If it's, if it's spinning in the same direction, or maybe it spins in the other direction. So your observation. And yeah, we can see your cameras, and you're cutting the the paper at the moment. So I don't know if you're on the right for you. I'm cutting the paper at the moment. Yeah, so it's just it's just looping on your camera, so I'm not seeing you at the moment. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, let me just. I don't know. Can you see me now? No, we're still seeing you folding the paper. Okay, let me just stop my share. I don't know what, okay. what the problem is. Okay. Okay, now we've got a black screen. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, it's every time it's something new. Um, that <laughs> is very interesting um, because I can't see my I can't see my my so share screen. Okay, let me just. See. Sorry guys, can you Ryan? Can you just tell me what you see? No, it's a black screen at the moment. Um, yeah. Maybe yeah. just switch your video on and off, maybe. Yeah, it's still so. just blank. Okay, I don't know what the problem is. Somehow, I think it got a bit irritated, probably yeah. using two cameras. Try, try switching your video on and off, otherwise you might need to leave and rejoin. Uh, I'll try. It's hanging. It's hanging. I think I think my my, my my program really doesn't like you know uh, different cameras. Um, so uh, uh, I hope that we can still do it here. Okay. So um, you haven't seen how it was flying. So I'll, what I'm going to try now is I'm going to try. Oops, sorry. I'm just going to see if I can actually. Can you see me? 
Can everybody see yes. me? Yes, yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so for those who haven't seen it, um, I hope that you've basically, uh, I'm not just sure if you, uh, how far you actually got. Um, let me just rewind and just use another camera. Okay, so you, you've seen me cutting, the, uh, cutting it. So I was cutting this side here and I was cutting alongside here. You can see just, just a small cut, just a small cut. So then I was bending this side backwards, this side forward. So you got a kind of a leg. So then with the rotors, you just bend one side, one side, one rotor backwards and one rotor to the front, just like this. And then you're going to attach a paper clip. There we go. All right. So let's see if we can now go back. Okay, hopefully you can see me and I'm going to hold up my helicopter here. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to hold it up high, as high as you can, and then you just let it go. And you observe in which direction your rotor is spinning. So again, I'm going to hold it up, and unfortunately I can't show you how mine is turning. So mine is spinning kind of this way. And then what you're going to do is, you're going to take the one that was pointing forward, you're going to bend it backward, and the one that was pointing backward, you're going to bend it forward. Here we go. And to see if it spins the other way, yes or no. So that was just our little helicopter. And of course, if you are uh, on a ladder or in a, at a higher position, and then you can kind of drop it down. So we had, had uh, during one of our workshops, we have a little, um, um, a little plateau over there. So that was huge fun. So the kids could kind of um, drop it down from there. Okay. So this was our helicopter. And so these ones are all things that are very nice. And, uh, you know, you can fly an, a paper plane or an aeroplane. Um, you can fly a helicopter. But what about when you want to go to a different planet? And I don't know if you were following NASA's report but they basically sent another rover um, onto Mars, which landed successfully, I think it was yesterday. And um, so there are some nice video clips of the, of the landing and so on. But the question of course is, you know, these kinds of things, things like a helicopter, things like a plane won't get us there. So what will get us there is of course a rocket. So what we're going to do now is we are basically going to make a straw rocket so that you can launch using a straw and just a sheet of paper. So here we go. Let's go back. So what you just need is a sheet of paper. Uh, let me just try another different color. So I hope you like green. I like green. So there we go. So that's a green sheet of paper. So what we're going to do is, um, and I'm just going to start doing my screen share so I can walk you through it. And hopefully, to this. Okay, so what basically forces are acting on a, on a rocket? So they also have similar kind of forces that just like your aeroplane. So the aerodynamic forces, so they depend on the shape, the size and velocity of the rocket and the properties of the atmosphere. Remember, we, um, out there in space, there is literally no atmosphere. So your, your rocket actually has to adapt to this. So again, we have something uh, that is called lift, just like with the aeroplane. We have something that is called drag, that basically is the air resistance. We have our weight. So the mass, basically, of all parts of the rocket. And we have our thrust. 
And this is what is a little bit different from your aeroplane. So it doesn't have wings. Uh, it just is like this, this kind of conical shape. So the thrust basically depends on the engine and the velocity and the pressure at the exit of the nozzle. Okay. So these ones are the kinds of forces that act on a rocket. And I have a little video for you. launch things into space? You've probably seen beautiful photos of Earth and other planets in our solar system. Those photos were often captured by spacecraft, robotic explorers doing their work far away from Earth. But how exactly do we send these spacecraft so far away? Well, it starts with a rocket. A really, really big one. Why rockets? A spacecraft and basically everything else on Earth is held down by Earth's gravity. However, a rocket burns fuel, called propellant, to push away from Earth and against gravity. This creates a force called thrust. A rocket needs enough fuel, a thrust, to speed up to at least 17,800 miles per hour. That's how fast you'll have to get going to fly above most of Earth's atmosphere and stay in orbit. Next, the rocket will release the spacecraft, but when that happens depends on where you're going. A spacecraft that orbits Earth is sometimes called a satellite. A satellite is released from a rocket at a specific distance from Earth. There, it keeps going around Earth in a circular path and orbit. This happens because there's a balance between the energy the satellite can put up to the rocket, called momentum, and the pull of Earth's gravity. The balance of these two forces can keep a satellite in orbit for many years. But what happens if you want to go farther than Earth? If you're trying to get to another planet, you'll need a fast rocket to overcome Earth's gravity. And you still need to release the spacecraft from the rocket. But you'll also need to figure out the best time to leave Earth to get to that planet. Take Mars, for example. Every two years or so, Mars and Earth are closest together. This is the best time to go to Mars, since it will require the least amount of fuel and time to get there. Okay, so seven months to go to Mars. Um, and if you want to know what, um, I think it was like 30,000 uh, miles per hour, uh, sorry, uh, 17,000 miles per hour. So this is uh, roughly about uh, yeah, 28,000 kilometers per hour. Okay, so this is the rocket that we are kind of going to build and I'm going to show you just now quickly how to launch it, and how we're going to launch it. I can just have things sorted out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it, put our rocket onto our straw and then we're going to kind of blow into it. So very simple and so on. So again, what we need is a sheet of paper, you need your glue, you need some tape, and of course you need a straw. Okay, let's just go back to how we're basically going to do this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fold a piece of A4 paper into half and then into half again. And then we cut along the folded line and use the only use one cut piece of paper. So you have time to make like four rockets. Then we're going to wrap our paper lengthwise along the straw to give your rocket a body or a shape. Now, very important is that you don't draw too tight. Okay, so and you don't draw too loose. So it needs to slide quite nicely alongside your straw. And I'm going to show you just now what I mean by that. And then we glue and tape along the edge of your paper to seal it shut. And then you don't just make sure that you uh, don't tape your rocket or glue your rocket to the, to the straw. Okay, so it needs to kind of come off again. We're going to take it off the straw. Uh, off the straw 
and then we're going to fold and tape one end of your paper rocket. Okay, so we, what we're going to do is we're basically going to bend down the top, one part of your, of your uh, paper rocket and then we're going to tape it close. So if you are very fancy and uh, you want to make it more like a cone shaped nose, a rocket nose, um, I show you how to do that. Okay, but very important is you need to make sure that no air can escape from the closed end. Okay, so what we are basically trying to do is we are trying to basically build up some kind of pressure inside your straw rocket. Okay, so let's just go back to our camera. Here we go. Okay, so as I said, what we're going to do is we're going to take our sheet of paper and we're going to fold it in half. I'm sorry, I just need to put on my glasses again. Here we go, we're going to fold it into half. Okay. Open it up. Okay. And then we're going to fold it, or we can just use it as this, and we're going to fold it in half again. Okay. So, what we just need is just this square here. So, what we're going to do is we are going to cut along. The creases here. So we're going to cut them with this crease here. And if it isn't straight, don't worry, it is still okay. And we're going to cut them with this crease. Here we go. Right. So the rest you can still keep for other rockets. So maybe you want to modify your design. Okay. So in the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to take our straw. And we're going to place it on the one end of our paper. And you can see this is the long side, this is the short side here. So we're going to place the long side on it. So then we're going to start lifting our paper up and we're going to start rolling our paper. And I know this is a little bit where this is a little bit of a tricky part, so you might need some help from an adult just make sure that you can freely move your straw in and out if you can't then you are too then it's too tight okay so just like this so let me continue rolling it up rolling it up okay so i usually gonna stop here because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some glue onto it okay so i'm gonna take one end and i'm gonna just some glue onto this end here. Okay, and I'm gonna continue rolling it up. And if I want to make sure that it doesn't come off, I'm just gonna take a little bit of tape. Okay, because sometimes these glue sticks are not really good, so I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna tape tape around the edge here and maybe also put tape around this edge here. so remember very important is your straw needs to move freely in and out okay so now that we've done this we can now pull it off so again, there are two different ways of how you can do this. What you can just do is you can just make it flat at the top, okay? And then just put a tape over it, just like this. You can kind of bend it down, okay? And put a tape over it, or you can just flatten the top, and then you can just take the one corner, bend it down a little bit, sometimes it's a little bit tricky so if you want a nose a cone nose shape so bend it down a little bit and put the other one round so you get like a arrow head just like this and very important is what 
you're going to put some tape. Just make sure that it is sealed properly, that no air can escape. Okay. So now this is looks almost like a rocket, but still um, the fins are missing. So the fins are basically there to um, stabilize the flight of your rocket. So what you can do now is. You can fold a piece of paper, scrap paper, and so on in half. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut a triangle. So you can see this is this is the side that is closed. So what you can just do is you can just kind of cut something like this out of it. See. Okay. So, and if you want to get the same size, you just put this one as a template. So you've got to place it on the edge here. Okay. And now you basically can cut along the same line here. You get two identically sized fins. Now, how you can bring it on, so you can use, for example, again, a little bit of glue. There we go. This, this, and my rock is here. So what you're going to do is you're going to place it. Right. Okay, so like this. And then you're going to glue the other side, the other fin. So and you can see what I'm doing is I'm just I'm just moving the edge of my fin through the glue. And I'm gonna place it on the rocket. So just kind of push it, push it on. You can see now that it's that I'm putting it in such a way that they are kind of parallel. And now, the, 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 what, do, what we need to do now is we just need to bend them a little bit like this. Oops. Now they're coming loose. Like this. Maybe a little bit like this out. And you can probably do a better job than I do. Okay. Sorry. As I said, the glue is not very good. So I'll just bend them like this and just press them on again. There we go. If you can't make fins, don't worry. Um, you can always try them out later. Um, so you can also kind of tape them to it. That is totally up to you. There we go. So there's our ready-made rocket. So let's see how we're going to launch it. There are different ways of how you can launch it. So you can launch it straight up into the air. So you basically bend your head backwards and then just uh, blow the rocket straight into the air. You can blow it at an angle or you can blow it straight and you can figure out which one will fly further. Okay, so ready to rock and roll. Tanya, what should we be seeing at the moment? You can see your table. Yes, and now you should. Okay, cool. Great. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Sorry, it's just. Uh... Okay, so here's my rocket. And this one is feeling tight. 
So also one of the important things is don't push them on too far in because then you need a lot of lung power. So you just push it in, put, put, put your straw in a little bit and then you kind of, and I'll put it like this sideways and then you just, see mine is a bit tight. Uh, if it's too tight, you just pull it out a little bit more and you just go. Mine is also not working. Uh, so I'm going to resolve to my other prototype. You see, this is the demonstration effect. I can find my rocket. No, I can't find my rocket. So again, it's not my day today. Ah, here we go. So, so if it doesn't uh, come out easily, so the, the more loose it is, the more easily it's going to come out. Um, then you just pull your, your straw rocket or your rocket a little bit forward and um, eventually it will come out. This almost brings me to the end, but I just wanted to actually launch uh, a kind of a, a propulsion rocket. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is I've converted this one here. I'm going to convert this plastic bottle into a rocket. So what I just need is some fuel, just like with a real rocket, some fuel, okay? And my fuel is just some methylated spirit that I've got here. I'm just gonna come up here. And what I'm gonna do is, so I'm just put it here. Sorry, this bit here going to inject a little bit of methylated spirit inside here. So usually methylated spirit will just burn. Okay, so if you ever have like a, a methylated spirit burner, so it would just burn off. So the trick is, and this is also what rocket scientists use, is that you need to have the right amount of fuel and very important oxygen. So currently, as you can see, I've, earned, I've got a little bit of liquid down here. So currently, my liquid is only exposed to very, very little oxygen that is in the atmosphere. So the trick is to basically surround it by more oxygen. And we do this, we can do this by actually breaking it into a vapor. So what I'm going to do is, I kind of shake up my little fluid inside. I'm gonna wait, um, you know, kind of warm it up a bit also. It also brings it into a, a kind of a gas phase. So, and you can see now, and I hope that I have enough methylated spirit in it. So you can see now that my, my liquid is almost kind of gone, but it's actually not gone, it's still here, but it's in a different form, it's in the form of a vapor. So now all my methylated spirit molecules are surrounded now by more and more oxygen okay and i hope i've done i've, I've done this uh, uh this start and it worked but i'm not just sure if this is something you also got away okay so here we go so now i've got the vapor inside i've got my rocket here Hopefully, it's going to fly off. All right. I hope you all saw how it was flying off, how it was shooting off. You might have even seen like a, a fire tail coming up. So how did it work? So at the end of my plastic bottle, there was in fact a little hole. So what happened was inside the bottle, we got combustion. So the air, the air heated up actually quite enormously and the air gas expanded. So the only way for the gas to come out is basically through this tiny little hole that we had in the lid. So what happened was that, and uh, this is called the extreme law, every reaction has an opposite, uh, every action has an opposite uh, reaction. So while the air was pushing up through this little nozzle, it was actually pushing the bottle forward. Okay, and that basically brings me to the end. Um, and I hope uh, despite these little um, glitches, you enjoyed our little um, making airplanes, uh, helicopters and rockets. And I hope to see you next week uh, when we're gonna talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Oh, that was amazing. 
We learn every day, hey? Thank you so much, Tanya, for yet another interactive session. Um, I think I heard people saying thank you to Tanya. Um, Tristan Poy, is that, was that you? Tanya. Hello, Tristan, how are you? I know that so it's very difficult. So guys, so as I said, if you have any questions, um, you can always send me an email to stec at ukzn.ac.za. I'm sorry, I just need to switch on again. And um, again, if you need clarification or if you just uh, want to redo anything, um, you're more than welcome to, uh, I know that uh, this has been recorded. Again, I apologize for the, for the, for the glitch. Technology sometimes, uh, you know, uh, doesn't work the way you want it to work. And uh, today was again one of those days that what could go wrong actually went wrong. But anyway, I hope still hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, guys. We definitely did enjoy it, Tanya. Um, all right, then. Um, I'm very glad that we still have another session with you again next week. Um, so to our wonderful guests, thank you very much for leaving everything you had to do just to be part of our workshop. If you want to watch again, just like I do, I want to watch it again with my daughter. Um, or you might have missed one of our past uh, shows. Or you might want to see what we have um, upcoming in our events. Please visit our website and our social media pages. Our website is www.sciface.org.za. Um, there you can find um, our upcoming events and our recorded sessions. Uh, we will put up a screen and you will see our Twitter handles and we, all, all details of our social media platforms. Join us again next week when we will discover the electromagnetic spectrum and as we will be hosting other events. Again, thank you to everyone for joining us. Thank you so much, Tanya. Uh, toodles, bye bye, everyone. Okay, bye bye. Thanks, Professor. Thanks.